Okay, welcome back to SixSigmaTV.net, uh, White Belt Overview. I'm Jeff Gray, and I'm going to take you through the Analyze phase of your White Belt Overview. Now, in this phase, you have now gathered your data, as Steve just told you, in the measurement phase. And now we're going to analyze this information to try to find your root causes of your problems. We're going to use things that are called hypothesis testing, statistical and graphical analysis tools. We're going to look at correlation in this phase. And then we're going to start looking at causation and the cause and effect, start identifying the root causes of that problem so we can focus on the improve phase that Steve's going to take you through next on once you've identified those root causes and we've validated them, how are we going to improve the process? So here are the, some of the tools and steps that you'll be going through um, in the analyze phase of your Six Sigma project or Lean Six Sigma project. One of the things you'll want to look at is once you've gathered data, like Steve just told you, you'll have different types of variation. Are you looking at common cause variation or special cause variation? Uh, common cause variation is variation common to your process. Special causes are those types of variation that are non-common or anomalies in your process. We're going to look at statistical software that you can use, and we use a software that's called Sigma XL. Um, you can go to their website and download a free trial of that and see how well you like it. It's an Excel plugin. Um, it's a very good software package, and we recommend that for a lot of people. It's called Sigma XL. In the analyze phase, your next step um, is looking at normality testing. Is your data normal? Is your data stable? What you want to do is have normal data and stable data in order to perform a lot of these uh, statistical analysis here um, and graphical analysis. If you don't have normal data, there are some other things we can do, and we'll teach you those later on. They're more advanced tools. But one simple thing that we do teach in the Green Belt is called Central Limit Theorem, where you can normalize your data so you can run these tests um, for statistical analysis of your data. So we take you through graphical and statistical analysis. You, we do some hypothesis testing, ANOVAs, t-tests, uh, regression analysis, scatter plots, those things. Those are some of the more advanced things, but those are the things your master black belt can help you do, um, can help you use when you're just starting out even at a yellow and green belt um, um, level. And um, in the analyze phase, the last thing you want to do is identify and validate those root causes. And that's what all of this analysis and data mining will help you do uh, in this phase. So some of the topics we talk about, are we have a theory of discussion. Um, we look at your statistical analysis, um, normality testing, stability testing. We look at box plots, scatter plots. We look at your root causes of like identification. We do your five Ys, your C and E matrix, or your correlation or fishbone charts. Um, and then we look at root cause validation. One of the things we look at here, too, is the dispersion of your data, the frequency of the distribution of your data. Um, and that helps us also understand the spread and the variation. We talk a little bit about that, not too much, but those are some of the things we look at. What we're looking for is to have a bell-shaped curve around your data. And so we look at those things, the standard deviation, the variation, the range, the spread, all those terms that you'll hear, uh, which help us understand if your data is skewed to one way or the other. Could indicate um, cycle times or a couple different things in your process. Um, if you have bimodal, information, you could be looking at a variety of maybe two processes, that kind of stuff. And that helps us with our analysis phase to see what type of data you have by looking at those dispersions. Another thing in the analyze phase we talk about is the types of variation. There are two types of variation in your process. Common variation, things that are predictable, expected, um, they're normal, and it's random, and it doesn't create anomalies in your process. So think about coming to work every day. You drive to work, you take the same pattern, you drop the kids off, you do those kind of things, you stop at the store to get a cup of coffee, get your donuts, whatever. Over time, over about 30 days or so, you're going to know how long it takes you depending on your process. Nothing's happening, it hasn't snowed, there's been no earthquakes, it's not raining in most cases. It's just the common amount of time it takes you to get to work. Special cause variation are those things that are unexpected, unpredictable. They're not normal. Say you're driving to work today and you get a fender bender. Well, that's going to take you a lot longer to get to work because something special happened. Something out of the ordinary has happened. Um, that's called a special cause. <laughs> and those kind of things um, 
or what we want to identify and eliminate from our processes uh, because then we want to focus on the common variation. That's really what's happening in the process. We want to get rid of those anomalies, take care of those first, and then work on the common variation. And that's what we want to squeeze and center your process on and meet those customers' needs and expectations. Uh, here, this chart here, I'm not going to go too in-depth to it, but this is a chart that shows us that we have normal data. And this is what we're looking for when we do our data and we do our histogram. It shows us that our data is normal. Once we do this, we can know that we can move on to look and see if our information is stable. And the next chart here is called an individual's chart. It's a chart, what's called statistical process control. We use this to make sure that our data is stable. This chart here will identify where in the process those anomalies happen, so you can go back and research them and take them out of the process, put things in place to eliminate those anomalies, and then work on the common variation in your process. And that's what we're looking to do. Even though your process might be normal and stable, doesn't mean it's meeting customer requirements. It just means that that's the location of your process. So you want to be really careful when you're looking at normality and stability. It's just telling you, yes, it's normal, it's common variation, we can predict what's happening, and now we need to fix it, because obviously you work in a project where you're not meeting needs of your customers, you're not meeting your targets, your spec limits, your requirements, so your, target, your process is off target. And now we have a baseline to begin to implement those improvements once we validate the root causes of why you're off target. And here's another thing we want to do too, is we want to look at what's called your process capability in the analyze phase. We want to see where your process is in location to the target. And that's what this chart here is talking about. And we go very in depth. If you go to the website and look at the uh, episode called CPK or process capability, we talk in depth about how to use this information to understand the location of your process and how much variation and spread is creating fallout beyond your requirements, beyond your spec limits if you're in manufacturing, beyond the voice of the customer if you're in a service environment. This chart here, um, process capability analysis, will help you understand where you are in relationship to those targets. You're the voice of the customer, voice of the process, or your manufacturing spec limits if you're building uh, products. This next chart here shows you some of the graphical charts that we use to help you understand visually what's going on with your data. Uh, the histogram we just talked about. The chart here in the middle is called a box plot. It lets you understand where you are in relationship to others within your organization or possibly different regions and how much spread you have and what the median and the mean are of your data. It's another way of looking at your data graphically. The Pareto chart helps you with understanding the defects in your process. And then the run chart and control charts let you look at variation over time. And then the scatter chart lets you look at um, correlations, positive correlations, negative correlations, no correlation at all, um, looking at your data. And these are some graphical charts you can use. So again, the Pareto chart here lets you look at your defects. It's an attribute information. When we talk about Pareto charts in depth in the, in the green belt, we can show you how to turn this into a couple different ways to look at your information. Um, time, cost, defects. Usually, this chart identifies 80% of your problems that stem from 20% of the causes. The box plot, if you look at this chart here, it lets you see that different regions are having different amount of variations in their processing time. It's another way to graphically look at where you are in relationship to where you want to be, if you're, especially if you're looking at different um, shifts, different regions, different locations, different product types. Um, you can use the box plot to help you understand the variation and the location of that process. Scatter plot lets you look at correlation. In this case here, there's no correlation in this example of our information. And so you want to keep digging deeper into your analysis phase and your, your root cause. Because in this case, this situation would have no impact on your root cause. There's no correlation to what you're looking for. We also look at regression, which takes that scatter plot a lot further um, in your analysis phase. And we take a deep dive into regression, a very good tool to help you look at the correlation and what a uh, variety of correlations and X's would have on that output. And so it helps you identify the best formula for improvement. It helps you identify the root causes um, 
using regression, regression analysis. Very good an analyzed tool. We also use a bunch of other tools as you go deeper down the process. Um, ANOVAs, T-test, F-test, Z-test, all kinds of different things that are more advanced statistically kind of things. So the best thing to do is to have your data be measurable, um, which is the um, continuous data that uh, Steve was telling you about, and we can use a lot of these statistical tools for deep dives. Once you start getting into that, we want to start looking into um, root causes. Five whys is a good tool to help you identify once you've looked at the correlations and your defects. You can start digging down deeper with this tool here called the five whys. Any of you have teenagers or young children, you tell them to do something, they ask you why, and you say, because I'm the parent, and they say why, and you just keep diving down until you finally pull your hair out. Well, this tool can help you get down to the root cause <laughs> by just saying why, 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 once you answer that previous question. Great tool, simple tool. The next one here is a C&E diagram we take you through. Once you do your five whys or you have your information, we start looking at the root causes of that issue. Great tool called the fishbone chart or the C&E diagram. And then when we start looking at um, improvements or correlations to those CTCs or root causes that impact those CTCs or the voice of the customer, we use this correlation matrix to see which processes or which, which um, root causes impact which CTCs. It helps us prioritize which ones to go after first. So we're not spinning our wheels trying to fix everything at once, but we're fixing the big heavy hitters. And this is a tool at the end of the ana analyze phase that'll help you do that. So but then we want to verify those root causes before we move on. You, know, you want to look at your statistical analysis, your experiments, use your master black belt, you know, take the smell, the smell check test to make sure that you know, it, it looks right, but validate it with your statistical analysis, and your graphical analysis, um, and make sure your data is supported um, and verified. So in summary, we want a clear process methodology used to analyze your data collection. You want to make sure your data aligns with your potential causes. It's the key focus area to identify your problems. Uh, make sure you look at the different patterns and special causes and outliers. Look at your process stability, capability. Use the appropriate tools to help you drive down to find those root causes. And the last couple slides here are just checklists that you can use. Pull down our presentation and make sure you've gone through all of these and you've double checked everything with your project champion before you go to the improve phase and start making process changes. Because those can be costly if you make the wrong changes. So make sure you run everything through your master black belt and your champion. And Steve is going to take you through the improve phase coming up next.